Tasty is back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. Again, a huge shout out to everyone. We haven't just gone over 5k. We've ran through it like a brick fence made out of blancmange, which is like a triple entendre there. So thank you very much for that. If you want to become a member of the channel, we've got members live. We'll have one this week because obviously we've got no footy to talk about from a account perspective. So we're going to be covering what to look for in the draft. Stay tuned for that. And then we will have another one at the end of the month. Um, just a fun one. So we've got something really cool planned with Lekas Doggers. This week, we've got a load of content for you. We've got Pommy Ponders tonight with Chabby Joe from the Centre Bound podcast recapping the week of the AFL. So come and say hello to that. Uh, we've got some VFL news coming up later. We've got all sorts of stuff. So check that out. But today, we're here for the most important thing. St -st 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 Stats Corner. My favourite. We're going to get a jingle for that. But let's start it, Calton. The roaming wings. So this is something that I've really, really enjoyed about the Blues in the last couple of weeks, particularly probably since the Geelong game, um, right at the start of the preseason. It was really poignant here how the wings were going to operate in a team defence system. And you know what? There's two things that I hate in the AFL. The term percentage and then using the vernacular team before everything, because it's kind of a throwaway statement. But what I wanted to talk about here was particularly, you did see this was a massive, massive shift. There was a great passage of play early in the first where we saw um, Mr. Ollie Hollands do it. We saw Blake Akers do it numerous times in the third quarter. And what that is, is allowing the team to get up the ground and be more offensive. You saw this game was really, really paramount to how good Richmond were at taking away the congestion, which is what we'll take, talk about late, later, really taking away Carlton's one wood. But one of the ways that Carlton negate that, and that's the new thing we've seen, is them attacking in these rows of nine and ten. And Blake Akers and Ollie Hollands and Matt Cottrell, when he's there, are getting these 14K plus times because they do this run. So when the ball is lost, they roam across the wing and then try and get to where... I'm flipping you off there, apologies... Um, they try and get to just behind where the half black flanks would sit and kind of be like kind of the cozy between the back pockets and the half backs. And what this allows them to do is play loose, but it also allows players like Adam Saad, Mitch McGovern, and Brody Kemp to run and attack the ball because what they do is they come and stifle and spoil. And this is a real key part of it. Carlton have really added a massive overlap run, and this was paramount last year to the success that Collingwood saw of creating extra options with the handball. And it's a real niche role. And it's probably why you'll see Ollie Hollands, Akers and Cottrell, bar injury, lock down this position for the whole of their season and probably the rest of their careers. And it's going to be really interesting because there's a player called Jackson Binns who has got an incredible in engine. There's also Elijah Hollands. And if Cowan can add that, which we have started to see with Connors being used in the mix and doing the same run in the midfield and try and get to where the wings were so they have an outlet ball. This could be a really intriguing thing moving forward. But this definitely won them the game because Cowton were under the cosh. Honestly, it looked a little bit like Dresden at times, the amount of bombs that were going inside 50. Cowton managed to negate that so well. And that was because of their roaming wingers. This I have been prattling on about wingers since I started YouTube and way before that. Ask any of my soccer mates, a frother winger, right? It's so integral and it's such a niche role and probably the most understated role in today's game. On next, contested animals. And this was a big, big case for the Blues. The Blues were struggling in the contest, especially around stoppages, especially around the clitches. And what, what really, really helped was Carlton's ability here to find it when it mattered. And players like Cripper, players like Hewitt, standing up in the furnace, particularly TDK as well, when the chocolates were down in that third, turned the tide of this game and got Carlton really going hard. It's no surprise that Carlton's turnover game was back. 21 midfield intercepts. And this was partly because Carlton found a way to win. Them roaming wingers resulting in 16 inside 50s between them for 23 points from them 21 intercepts. But it was the contest that we really struggled in. Usually you see Carlton dominate this facet, 
Richmond are a very good structured side around clearance and stoppages. Cowton are probably that dominant scoring side. What they did here is they just flooded that area with their big blokes. Jacob Hopper, if he wasn't playing football, would be opening the doors for the Adams family. He's just a big oaf. And he did his job incredibly well this game. Just trying to negate Carlton's passage through the corridor. And we know that usually in this situation, Carlton win the tap. They look for that handball out the back and a direct runner goes straight through, trying to make the seas part like Moses. He was stopping that. He was like, no, not today. You haven't paid your water bill. And that was really strong. But Carlton tried to find a way to negotiate it. And that was a big part in the third quarter, particularly in the fourth where Cripps absolutely took the mick in that fourth quarter of just getting the hands on the ball and trying to lambast his way through it. It was really, really impressive even how Cowton did that. Cowton's pressure rating in the third was 217, which is abnormally high. And this is the new case in point. We're the blue-collar blues. We ain't about, you know, playing sexy football and hanging it on the Louvre. We're on about smashing the doors off the Louvre. That's what we're about. And a real credit to them players, Hewitt, Cripps, Fogarty, TDK as well. Really good. My one observation from this game was it was interesting that the taps that T TDK won, he was genuinely 55% of the time tapping it forward. And Cowton, Cowton then kept doing that all the time. So the ones that he actually dropped down, Cowton struggled with. So th this midfield needs to play with TDK. Got to remember, this is still quite a baby midfield. There's that synergy. When you look at someone like Max Gorn, these guys close their eyes and they know where Max Gorn's going to do it. So once that gets better, that could stop this flooding in which we see. Different angles. We talked about the 21 points from Intercept. This is creating different angles. And we saw this particularly in Cowton's scoring change that we had late in the third to midway in the fourth. These intercepts were causing Cowton to either go through the corridor or something we haven't seen for a long time, the outlet ball. And there was a great little passage of play where Blake Akers got the intercept, handballed inbound to Hewitt, Hewitt picked out Cottrell and Cowton changed the angle. And this allowed our forwards to kick goals. 12 goals coming from Charlie and Harry, allowing them to lead. My one observation here is they don't often lead from deep. It's kind of in no man's land. If Cowton can get some real confidence, and I think that comes from the third toll, that could really add a dynamic. And it's going to be interesting what they do with Elijah because he may not be the tallest cookie, but this is something he is strong overhead and his little pace. Or Ashton Moyer, there was lots of talk about him coming in. This could be another dynamic that you leave him in no man's land or make him lead deep from the pocket, which is a skill set of both. And But different horses for courses. Elijah's going to give you 14 Ks running. Ashton Moore's going to give you that more height. But Cowton looking to change up the angles definitely won them the game late in the third. They started to hit short, hit long, hit deep. And we probably saw that for the first time this year which is really important for the Blues. Defending territory, it has to be said that Carlton now are really starting to change up what we've seen from them from a long, long time. And that is they're really utilising paddling, trying to keep the ball in motion a lot. There's a lot to be said about this side that they're almost, I'd never say they copy, but they have a lot of Hawthorne's dynasty era about them, that they've got to keep the ball in motion. And this is a very weird thing for Carlton because Jack Silvani said it was very slow and arduous, and it was. It was very grindy on the ground. But Carlton, to their credit, defended that territory hard, and it was getting the ball forward at all costs and then creating repeat stoppages. And that was more what Richmond were trying to do to slow Carlton down. But Carlton winning the territory battle by a lot. Do you know what I mean? 300 metres in a game is a lot of football when it's so tightly contested. And that is a very interesting part of Carlton, really trying to get this game moving forward, trying to get the territory, and then trying to use your pressure. And that's good tactics from Carlton, finding another way to skin a cat. Now they've got this pressure and they can maintain it for fourth quarters, just get the territory. I know people are disappointed by the margin of wins, but... You've got to do it. And that adaptation is so important. It is so important in today's game. And we used to say this a lot about the Blues. It was kind of obvious at times. It was kind of obvious how we'd lose games. And the big thing here was Cowton knocking that kick to handball ratio down to 1.5 again. They're really looking to get this game moving. And it runs them into trouble a few times. But usually when you take the stoppage and clearance away from the boys... 
it's game over. We know we're going to lose it. They found a way both games now to really change that up. And last week where we saw a more kick-heavy game style, to see a handball and to take the contest on and to tire them out, a big factor of this was the conditioning of our boys versus theirs. They started to run it, and particularly from when that second injury occurred to Gibkes, which we send our love, Carlton knew they were one down on the bench, and the handball game started to go because we're trying to burn their energy. This was a very clever, clever play, and it's something that I have commented many a times on Carlton when we've got close to Richmond in three quarters. All in all, it wasn't a game that you'll talk about and you'll tell your friends and family you were there or you watched, but... It was another win and another different method to winning. And these will pay us back in the long run. We get a week's break. There's an awful lot to work on for the Blues. Definitely trying to gain some ascension in that corridor. You can't always rely on the legs tiring. But all in all, eight points from a maximum eight. The Blues are flying. I hope you enjoyed the show. This is my favourite time of the week. Try to split it up so you've got more of an a fun part and then more of an analytical part. Let me know how you're enjoying it. You seem to be enjoying it, everyone. Much love. Look after yourself. I'll see you on the Blue Abroad show tonight and then the Pommy Ponders show at nine. Muchas gracias. Pom out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's having